Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. This weekend, we were working on the financial freedom of a ton of Lifestyles Unlimited members. And and what do I mean by that? Well, we were doing our weekend version of our financial freedom seminar. And this is this is where our members have an opportunity to get into the fundamentals of real estate investing. Yeah, this is this is like boot camp. This well, it's not really like boot camp because you know, boot camp is something completely different. And I know there are people out there that say, Oh, you gotta come to our boot camp because we're well, okay. Maybe that was a bad reference because we we don't do business that way. But The Financial Freedom Workshop is a 16-hour comprehensive course of instruction that every member of Lifestyles Unlimited must attend at least once. And I say at least once because when you go there the first time and you realize that we're serious about giving you the information you need to be successful... You may have showed up, you know, thinking, oh, maybe I know it all. Or, you know, maybe you have a chip on your shoulder or maybe you've got some experience or or who knows, who knows what mindset you came into the classroom with. But once you sit there for, you know, the first couple of minutes, you realize that we're there to do business and we're there to properly educate you. And my wife and my son made a decision that they were going to sit through the financial freedom class over the weekend. And you know what? Lifestyles Unlimited members do that all the time. And and the reason we go back to the classroom to take that 16-hour course of instruction is because it is rooted in the fundamentals. If you've ever played a sport, you know everything begins with the fundamentals. You know that everything has a basis. And from that basis, everything else branches and grows from that. Well, it's no different with what we do. Because we have to get you to understand that by investing in real estate and by doing it correctly, and of course, we show you the correct way to do it. Because there are plenty of wrong ways to do it. And if you do it wrong, you could get damaged. And we don't want you to get damaged. Because if you get damaged, it throws you off course. And we want you to be on a path to retirement in five years or less. So, you know, I was talking to my wife this morning and I said, okay, so what were what were some of the, the takeaways that you had? And she looked at me like, what do you mean? And I said, okay, so what, what did you learn? Give me one thing that you learned that was like a new aha moment for you. In other words, you, you probably heard it before when you sat through the training, but this time it really just stuck out to you. It's like all of a sudden it was that piece of information that you were missing. And you know what she said? She said, templating. And you're probably thinking, templating, what does that mean? Well, this was her epiphany. And this was kind of lost on her the previous times that she had gone through the training. And it made like complete sense to her this time. And what it means is to take a property and to determine what your finished product looks like. And some of you are thinking, okay, well, wait a minute, aren't all houses different? Yes. All houses are different. Aren't properties you buy in maybe different neighborhoods? That is true. So what what is this whole templating thing about? Well, it has to do with building your team of professionals that are going to assist you because you're not going to go into these properties and do the physical work yourself. First of all, you're probably not qualified. And if you are qualified to do it, your time is better spent in the leadership role than it is in the execution role. 
So you, you find quality people for your team. Now, we make that really easy for you at Lifestyles Unlimited because we have a very vast vendor list. So you, you can get anybody you're looking for for any aspect of a real estate investing business just off of our vendor list. And if you happen to live in a part of the country or you're doing business in a part of the country where maybe we just don't have a deep bench available to you, that's not a problem because we have members on our team that are ready, willing, and able to assist you with building that team. But templating also meant something else to her. In other words, picking colors for the exterior that you're going to stick with. Picking colors for the interior that you're going to stick with. Picking materials that you will use on the property. Primarily on the interior, things like flooring and, and cabinets and, and countertops and, and stuff like that. You know, fixtures. And, and what she was referring to is standardizing. In other words, standardizing the finished product. And the reason you do that is so that when you go out and you find your sources of supply, you know the SKU numbers for everything you're going to buy. So you've got a master sheet, literally, of everything that you're going to use that you've already previously selected so that when you get the ball rolling and you start buying one house after another after another, you don't go back to square one and reinvent the, the wheel. You don't do that. You stick with what you know, with what you believe is the correct version of the truth. And we, we help you shape all of that stuff. And you go forward from there. Pretty cool stuff, huh? What I'm going to do for you on today's show is I'm going to talk about some things that I think you need to hear about. Because, I mean, I've got some, some current data on how much money you're actually saving in your 401k. And I'm here to tell you, it's scary. I also have some medical information about elderly people. And you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm not an elderly person. Why, why would I need to know that information? Here's the real reason. One day, you will be an elderly person. And you need to know what you are in store for based on trend information. Because I'll tell you what, the body you're going to have in 20 or 30 years is not the body you have now. Stick around. I've got a ton of things to share with you. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Now, let's get back to your map to financial freedom. Welcome back to the show. Let's be raw here. Let's, let's get a little raw today. And I'm going to share with you some wisdom that I think is important for you to hear because nobody else is telling you this stuff. So it might as well be me. And you know what? If you get mad at me for what I say, uh, I'll let you get over it. It's, it's totally okay. Yeah. So, But here's what I want to share with you. If you're looking for help, if you're looking to find solutions to your retirement problem, don't look to the government. Don't do that. I mean, the government will probably fail you at some point. It's just the way it is. Or your expectations might be a little bit higher than what the government can actually deliver for you. And don't count on others to take care of you. I mean, my parents did that as they approached old age and realized that they were literally going to have to work until they died. And when they couldn't work anymore, guess who they wound up living with? Yeah, either my brother or myself. And... It was kind of a gut blow to them. And they stayed with us until they got to a point in their physical health where we just couldn't provide the level of care that they needed. And, you know, from there, well, things just kind of went downhill. So don't look for other people to provide for you in your old age. You really need to have a game plan that's going to get you where you want to get to. And if you really want to help yourself, I'm being honest with you. If you really want to help yourself, look in the mirror. And that person staring back at you is really the best person equipped to help you. I'm, I'm totally serious with you. See, what I'm going to share with you right now is some information that was just shared with me. And it's, it's not really comforting information. It's... Something that came from CNBC, 
And it's talking about how much Americans had saved in their 401ks through the fourth quarter of 2020. Now, you, you might recall that was only about two months ago. And these numbers, they're not good. Now, I, I can look at the you know 20 to 29 age group. They've saved about $15,000. Why? Because, well, they're, they're probably living paycheck to paycheck. And retirement, you know, I mean, come on, let's think about it. When you're t- your 20s, retirement is, is such a distant life away. You're not really focused on it. And when I looked at the, the 30-year-olds, they had saved about $50,800. I mean, not, not, a, not a huge chunk of money, but nothing to sneeze at either. The 40-year-olds, those from the age of 40 to 49, they had saved an average of $120,800. Okay, I'm here to tell you, if you're in your 40s and you have that amount or less, there's, there should be warning lights going off right now. I mean, the, the siren should be raining and screaming or screeching, whatever sirens do. This should be a wake-up call that what you're doing is probably not going to get you to where you're trying to get to. Yeah, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. Let me talk about the 50-year-olds. I mean, this is, this is the population that I'm in. I'm almost 57 years of age. So from the age of 50 to 59, my peer group has saved $203,600. And, and some of you think, well, that's, that's a healthy amount of cash. It is a healthy amount of cash until you decide that it's time for you to start living off of it. And let's, let's go ahead and jump up to the 60-year-olds. The the demographic age sixty to sixty nine. Now they've saved a little bit more. Their average saving is two hundred twenty nine thousand one hundred dollars. Now the reason I think it's only a little bit more than the fifty year olds is because it's about in that time period in your life in your sixties where you go, all right, man, it's it's time for me to consider slowing down here because I'm I'm really getting tired of a lifetime of working. And then the seven year olds that they identified their amount of savings was two hundred thirteen thousand six hundred dollars which which clearly indicates to me that they are in a position of actually living off of their savings now when i say living off of their savings i mean that i mean that because when they stop working the money that goes into that 401k also stops any matches you got from your employer well if you're not contributing to your 401k, they're not contributing to your 401k. And if you've left the workplace, then chances are you're not contributing anymore. So let's let's take a look at those 50-year-olds. Let's let's say you're the age of 59 and a half or 59 and 11 months, whatever. You're getting ready to roll over the odometer to 60 years of age. And you've saved, well, I'm going to go with the number that CNBC gave me, that 204,000, well, uh, let's just call it 204000 It was 203600 but we'll go with 204000 We'll just make it a little bit nicer for you. Now, let's, let's also assume that you're going to get some Social Security in there. I mean, your, part of your retirement strategy is to rely on the government. And, you know, I mean, you can, you can make your own assessment as to the health of Social Security and whether or not that's going to be there for you in old age or not. My, my impression of Social Security, yeah, it's, it's kind of a crapshoot. Uh, to me, I've been paying into it for my entire life. Yes, I have. And when I finally get to the point where I'm going to say I would like to take that, I do not know that there's going to be a check coming my way. But let's assume it is coming in. Let's, let's assume that you get to the age of 65 and you decide to take Social Security right there. I'm going to jump up to the, the higher bracket, the $229,100. We'll call it $230,000 to make the math easy for my little brain. And you're going to get $2,000 a month from Social Security. And it's going to take $4,000 a month for you to maintain your standard of life. And when I say your standard of life, the normal household expenses that you have that creates your bills. You know, maybe it's rent, maybe it's a mortgage payment, maybe you paid off your house, I don't know, but you still got taxes and insurance, and then maybe you've got a car. And with that car, maybe you have a car payment, maybe you don't. You know, and then you've got things like utilities, and then you've got things like, you know, food, and then you've got medical expenses, which have a tendency to go up a little bit. Oh, but maybe you're on Medicare, so maybe it's not so bad. I don't know. But let's just assume that it's gonna take $2,000 a month for you to operate your household. 
on top of the $2,000 you're going to get from Social Security. So if you take that $230,000 and you divide it by $2,000 a month, it's going to give you 115 months of income streams. Now you divide that by 12. And basically what it's telling me is that in nine and a half years, your supply of money is probably going to run out. That means at the age of 75, you're going to be stuck living on Social Security, and you better hope that you can live off of that $2,000. Come back from the break. I got more news for you. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the show. So if you've got a couple hundred thousand dollars in your 401k and you're, you're in your 50s or maybe your 60s and you're banking on that money to retire with, I'm just here to tell you, be very careful, be very cautious, because you may not be able to get to where you're trying to get to with that amount of money. And the other drawback to having that coffer of money out there is that there is, there's no resupply to that capital. So when you, when you stop working and you stop contributing to that 401k, yeah, the income stream to it stops. It does stop. Now, there, there's a growth component to it because they, they have a tendency to take that money and invest it in different ways based on your direction, primarily in the stock market, maybe in the bond market. Again, it depends on your direction, depends on your risk level, which, which you're trying to accomplish. But I'm here to tell you, even if you get to your end of your life and you don't get to the point where you run out of money and you pass away, you've consumed that money. There's not a whole lot left to leave for those that you leave behind to help them maybe make a better future for themselves. Yeah. I mean, I I, I hate to be the guy that tells you that, but I'm the guy that just told you that. Now, what I'm going to share with you right now is a deal that, One of our members, a guy I know, his name's David, he did, he actually bought this property in 2018. Now, let me just give you some background on David. David, in 2007-ish, he he had, I think he said, around a quarter of a million dollars in his retirement account. At that time period, he was was in his 40s. He was pretty much a stay-at-home dad. Uh, His wife worked full-time. Uh, for the military. She was a, a captain in the Air Force. He had served in the Air Force and left the Air Force. He went into business for himself, uh, opened up some stereo stores, was was very successful, but quickly realized that you know when you're self-employed, you're literally working 80 hours a week because if you're not there to take care of stuff, well, you're not there to take care of stuff. And there's nobody better qualified to take care of stuff than you because you own the business. Well, he had sold those stereo stores had something like a quarter of a million dollars set aside based on the proceeds of those sales and was leading a life as a stay-at-home dad while his wife was serving in the Air Force. And, you know, it wasn't a bad life. And then 2008 hit. And you know what happened to his quarter of a million dollars? Yeah, that's right. 2008 was, was a nasty period in the stock market. His quarter of a million dollars reduced down to about $70,000. And at that time and place, he became a member of Lifestyles Unlimited. And he learned how to successfully invest in real estate. And what he did, because he was looking for capital, was he took his money out of that retirement plan that he had, and he put it to work in real estate. The other thing that he did was that he realized, well, he was following a Dave Ramsey mindset. I mean, he had paid off his house. He thought that was the way to financial success. So he had equity in his house, too, that eventually he tapped into to do more real estate deals. Well, let me fast forward to this last weekend. 
I, I started off the show telling you that my wife and my son were participating in the two-day financial freedom course, which is the foundational course that every member of Lifestyles Unlimited goes through. Well, David's one of those guys that actually teaches that course now. Now, let me, let me fast forward to yesterday because as of yesterday, David was worth somewhere in the neighborhood of 8.8, .8, maybe $9 million based on his real estate investing. And he started literally with $70,000. And because he learned how to invest correctly, he learned how to buy real estate correctly, rehabilitate it correctly, build his team correctly, surround himself with like-minded people, as well as a mentor to keep him focused and on target. He's been investing in real estate ever since. He hasn't, he hasn't looked back. He doesn't, he doesn't care about a 401k. He's got a net worth of like $9 million based on all the real estate assets that he has. Now, he actually shot me a, a message over the weekend. He said, you know, he was going through his, all the deals that he had transacted in 2020, which is obviously last year, the coronavirus year. And he said, you know, Al, this is my worst deal. The worst deal I did in 2020, I thought, oh man, maybe he had a train wreck, you know, because everybody always asked me, well, what, what about the deals that you guys do? Don't you guys like have bad deals? And yeah, you know, we're not, we're human beings. We're not infallible. So this was David's bad deal. Let me just share the numbers with you. He purchased this thing in late 2018 for $132,000. This was a seven plex. So it was a multifamily, small multifamily property. This thing was in really bad shape. I mean, when I say really bad shape, I mean really bad shape. But, you know, didn't scare David because he knows everything there is to know, literally, about how to remediate property because he's done so many of them. He can't help. I mean, he would, he would have to be asleep to not learn anything. So he is very knowledgeable as to what code is and what he needs to do and what he needs his contractors to do because he orchestrates the deal. He doesn't go in there with a hammer and start, you know, doing stuff. He knows what needs to get done. He directs his, his teams to do it. They get to work and they get it done. So with that purchase price of 132,000 and the fact that, that property needed $150,000 in repairs, he was all in on this property for $282,000. Now, some of you are thinking, man, that $282,000. I don't, I don't, I mean, even, even if I had that in my 401k, I don't have access to that. Well, Here's the other thing David doesn't do. He doesn't use all of his own money in these properties. See, he has relationships with lenders that understand our business model. He was able to go out and secure a loan to not only acquire the property, but to do the renovations, or at least most of the renovations in the property. So his actual out-of-pocket expense was somewhere in the neighborhood of about $85,000. That's the amount of money he had to outlay in order to get this property up to today's standards. And he did that. And he has seven great residents living in his property. It's now a beautiful place to live. And he sold the property in 2020. And this is what he said. He said, look, I sold it for $460,000. So after the cost of sale and subtracting all of his all-in costs of 282, he netted $143,000 in profit. $143,000 in profit. He made 169% return on his investment just on the valuation increase based on the fact that he was able to repair this property, get it up to good standards. He was able to find well-qualified people that wanted to, to live there. He was able to execute long-term leases. He held that property for as long as he needed to hold it to so that he would be eligible for long-term capital gains taxes, which he's not really even worried about the taxes on it because he gets depreciation off of of other properties that are going to cover this. So he didn't even have to do a 1031 exchange. So my question to you is this, do you want to spend an entire lifetime saving up maybe $230,000 in a 401k? Or do you want to learn how to take maybe that money you have sitting in your 401k, repurpose that money and you're thinking, oh man, that's risky. That's risky. It's not risky if you know what you're doing. And by repurposing that money, getting 169% return on investment in 18 months, and we didn't even talk about the cash flow that he received. But we come back from the break, I do have some bad news to share with you. Stick around.
Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. So in this segment, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm actually going to tell you some stuff that you need to hear that maybe you don't want to hear, but if I don't tell it to you, you won't know because I doubt if you're going to go out and seek this information out yourself. And here it is. As you get older, your body will break down. It will break down. Yeah. And no matter how healthy you feel you are today, and you may already be dealing with health issues. Trust me, I deal with health issues. I spent 27 years in the Army. I can't help but not deal with health issues based on my military service. But there, there are conditions out there that may impact you in the future that you're not even dealing with today. Did you know that 92% of seniors have at least one chronic disease and that 77% have at least two? Yeah, I'm not making that up. That's based on information that I found from the Na National Council on Aging. Yeah, chronic conditions. So, so what, what, you know, what, what do you have to look forward to? Things like heart disease, stroke, cancer, diabetes. Those are the most common ones. And they, they're also very costly. And the reason I bring that up is that, you know, when I was talking about, hey, if you can get by in $4,000 a month, and you position yourself to where, okay, I got enough money in that 401k that I can cover two grand a month. And I've got enough built up in Social Security, provided it's there, that Social Security is going to contribute two grand a month. And I could go maybe to the age of 75 if I start at the age of 65. Or maybe, it, maybe I shift it farther down. Maybe I keep working till the age of 70. And maybe my numbers get a little bit different. But you got to know how long you can live off of that money that you've got put away. And you've got to make an, a reasonable estimation of how long you're going to live. Now, you, you can base that off of, you know, what your, what your parents did. I mean, how long did your parents live? Both of mine lived to the age of 75. I got, I got two benchmarks right there. Now, I did things a little bit differently with my life than they did with their lives. I mean, spending 27 years in the army, I was forced to do physical fitness. I was forced to take care of my body because that's, that's what you do in the military. My, my parents didn't necessarily do that. So maybe, maybe I can go longer. I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at this thing. 92% of seniors have at least one chronic disease and 77% have at least two. I'm 56, almost 57, and I suffer from at least two. Yes, I do. No matter what I have done in my life to guard against my body deteriorating, I can't prevent it. I can't prevent it. So I bring this up. Not to scare you, but I bring this up for you to realize that you're going into a place in your life where maybe you're actually kind of giving up some of your good years. I mean, they say the golden years. I mean, you know, everybody wants to get to the golden years. But everybody that I have known that has been in the golden years has, has, has suffered with health problems. And the bulk of their day seems to be going from one doctor's appointment to another Oh, and they're a little bit, you know, I mean, they, they can't just get up and skip down the road. They've got physical ailments, too. Just about everybody in my family has, has been confined to a wheelchair some point in their life as they got to the back end of their life. You need to consider these things. I mean, why, why not just do something right now that will change the trajectory of your life? and get you retired in the next five years. Yeah, you heard me correctly. You can do this. 
you can absolutely do this. And I don't care where you started. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how much time you have. You can make an informed decision right now, right this second, that you're going to do something a little differently. That you're not going to wait until the age of 75 to expire and be broke and living off of whatever Social Security gives you. I mean, I gave that example of David's worst deal. His worst deal, 169% return on his investment. He started with $85,000 injected into that property. I think he said it was $146,000 in profit in 18 months. Let's, let's run that math. $146,000 divided by, let's go one and a half, 1. 1.5. So basically he made almost $100,000 per year. And he wasn't working full-time on that property. He wasn't working 40 hours a week on that property when he was renovating it. See, we taught him the business model that makes sense. We, we showed him what we called the map to financial freedom. And he's embraced it. As a matter of fact, he is teaching our, our members now how to do it. And he's totally cool with you, like, hanging out with him while he's doing it. I mean, I've gone and I've hung out with him while he's doing it. I've been on one of his properties. A couple weeks ago, I did a live broadcast from one of his properties, just trying to give you an idea of what was going on during the rehab phase. He was doing an eightplex. It's another property that had the potential to give him an extra quarter of a million dollars. Actually, that one was going to do much better, because if I remember the math now... He was going to make like in the neighborhood of three fifty to four hundred thousand dollars off of this property once it's done. If you're not making income streams like that right now, and if you're trading your time for money, you probably are not going to get to where you're trying to get to. And your financial planner is not going to tell you this stuff. They're, they're just going to tell you, hey, you know, just you know, up your contribution. You know, hey, does your your employer going to match you? I'm going to tell you something right now that. Well, I'm just going to tell it to you. It's sensitive information about somebody I know who happens to be a financial planner. And he works seven days a week. He has a second job to provide him a source of income so that he can make ends meet. And his wife works full time, too. The guy's exhausted. And he's a financial planner. See, here's the thing about financial planners. They're, they're not bad people. Don't get me wrong. They're just misguided. They're working for an organization, essentially doing sales. They're, they're selling you products, products that help them earn fees. Next time you sit down with your financial planner, maybe you ought to ask them, hey, you know, what's your net worth? And when they get all, you know, hot under the collar because, you know, a little nervous and a little uncomfortable with what you're asking them. That's a valid question. Shouldn't you be taking advice from somebody that's making the kind of returns that you expect to make? It's not hard to become a member of Lifestyles Unlimited. It is not hard. We don't make it difficult for you. As a matter of fact, we've got a, like a screaming great deal to become a member right now. And we're doing that because we want to show you that there's a different path. And we will give you all the tools that you need and all the education that you need in order to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. It's a game changer, folks. It's a complete game changer. And you really need to peel the onion back and figure out where is it you're trying to get to and are you capable of getting there? You're smart. You can do the math. We've got two dedicated case studies coming up in the month of March. If you want to attend one of those case studies, shoot me an email at askal at luinc.com. And what I will do is I will forward you the email that allows you to register because I want you to see the significance of what we do. And if you really want to check out what we do, go to freeworkshoplivestream.com and get registered for one of our free workshops. And remember, it's not the money, it's the lifestyle.
The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.